peas and carrots, cookies and milk, donuts and coffee, peanut butter and jelly, macaroni and cheese, bacon and eggs, burgers and fries. These are all, of course, classic combinations, pairs that go famously well together. I'm Ian Cook. I'm a product manager at Voltron Data, and I'm here to tell you about another duo that complement each other perfectly. They're not foods. They're two open source projects, Arrow and Substrate. Uh, but first, before I say anything about Arrow and Substrate, I want to talk about why data analysts are so hungry for what they provide. What every data analyst really wants is this. They want to use their favorite analytics domain-specific language, maybe it's SQL or Pandas or Dplyr, and they want to use it to query infinitely scalable data using infinitely scalable compute resources, and they want it to be fast and cheap. That's what they want. Um, hat, hat tip here to Ben Stansel. This was inspired by a diagram he wrote. Um, so that's the dream, uh, but unfortunately, the reality today is that data analysts are not able to live that dream. Instead, they have to navigate this dizzyingly complex landscape. Uh, so starting at the top, we have a rich landscape of different analytics DSLs. There's SQL, but SQL is not one standard language. It's a set of numerous different dialects with various idiosyncrasies. For Python users, there's Pandas and Ibis and some others. For R users, there's Dplyr and also Datatable. Um, and there are other language communities with other preferred syntax for data analysis tasks. So skipping the client connectivity APIs layer, I'll come back to that later, uh, and going to the engines and storage section of the diagram, there is some history behind how all this came to be. Uh, to tell it very briefly, traditionally there were relational database management systems that vertically integrated compute and storage. There were open source ones like Postgres and MySQL, commercial ones like SQL Server and Oracle, um, you load the data into these and they store and manage all the data as well as doing the compute work to execute queries on that data. That's what I mean by vertically integrated. Uh, but in the first decade of the 2000s, we had the start of the big data era and the traditional database systems could not effectively scale to handle the volumes of, of data. So there were some commercial vendors like Teradata, Vertica, and Atiza um, that responded with scale-out data warehouse solutions. But these were often expensive and inflexible. So many turned to the Hadoop ecosystem, which promised better scale-out economics and more flexibility. So it achieved this by separating compute and storage. So we saw the emergence of distributed query engines like Hive, Impala, Spark, Drill, Presto, Trino, and, and others. And we saw new storage systems like HDFS. Then the hyperscale cloud providers got in and created their own engines like Athena and BigQuery and their own cloud object storage systems like S3 and GCS. Uh, so now you could just put loads of CSV files or Parquet files or whatnot into your storage system and just point one of these engines at those files and you could query them. Um, and this was pretty great especially for data analysts who are accustomed uh, to using Python or R, because that's how they're used to working. Uh, you have files, often in local storage, and you read them with some Python or R function, and effectively Python or R serves as the engine uh, to query those files. Recently, even more engines have cropped up, some distributed, some that run on a single machine. There's DuckDB, uh, there are two query engines uh, in the Arrow project, and so on. So there's numerous options to choose from. Uh, but here's the trouble. All these query engines and all these storage systems, they do not all interoperate nicely. Uh, so you cannot just pick an engine and pick a storage system and expect them to work together efficiently or even work together at all. Some of these query engines have strong affinities to specific storage systems, uh, so if you're using Hive, you're probably using it with HDFS. Impala, probably with HDFS or Kudu. Athena, probably with S3, and so on. And there is very little standardization for how engines access the data in different storage systems. Instead, we have numerous different non-standard data access APIs uh, so that every pairwise integration between an engine and a storage system is a big ordeal to develop. Also, some of these storage systems are actually engines in their own right. They, they can do some types of compute operations right in the storage layer. 
Kudu, uh, S3 with S3 Select, Ceph, MinIO, these can all do more than just serve files to the engines. Uh, engines can push down some compute operations to them. Um, but again, they do not use a standard way of representing these push down operations. Now I'm going to go back up to the client connectivity APIs layer here, and we have the same problem here. There are multiple ways to connect clients to engines. There's ODBC and JDBC and a panoply of other types of APIs and custom connectors. The lack of standardization at these two layers causes interoperability to suffer. So this picture looks like it shows an abundance of choices, uh, but really it's more like a maze that you need to navigate and most of the paths lead to dead ends. So how can we solve this problem? Uh, well, the good news is that there are two open source projects, Arrow and Substrate, that are already beginning to solve it. Uh, these two projects can solve the problem of connecting clients to query engines and connecting query engines to storage systems, including storage systems that are capable of performing pushed down compute operations. Uh, so how can Arrow and Substrate achieve this? Well, at the core of each of these two projects is a standard. Arrow defines a standard for representing tabular data, and Substrate defines a standard for representing operations on tabular data, what we call relational operations. So our vision is that these two standards will reach a high level of adoption in the data analytics ecosystem. So systems will be able to produce and consume Arrow formatted data, and also produce and consume subst Substrate formatted queries or plans. By speaking these two common languages, systems can be modular and composable. So you can pick a DSL or other client interface, pick a query engine, pick a storage system, and have them all work well together with excellent performance. So I'll show a concrete example to illustrate this. Uh, but first, here's the old way of connecting the three layers of a, da a data analytics stack, a client, an engine, and a storage system. And this is the way most data analytics stacks work today. So on the client side, you write, say, a SQL query uh, in a specific dialect of SQL, which you have to choose to match what the engine expects. The client sends that SQL string to the query engine. The engine receives it and converts it into a query plan in a plan format specific to that engine. Uh, then the engine looks at the plan and identifies what data it needs to read. It sends a request to fetch that data from the storage system. The storage system then sends a set of files containing that data over the network uh, to the engine. The engine deserializes those source data files into the specific in-memory format that it uses internally. Then it executes the query plan on that source data to generate the results data. Uh, it then serializes that result data into a different format for sending over the network uh, then it sends that data back to the client, which deserializes it into the format required by the client. And then finally, you see your result set. So this works okay, but it's inefficient. Uh, there's costly serialization and deserialization happening in multiple places. And if it's a big query and your source files are not in an efficient data format like Parquet, then it might take a long time to send those files over the network to the engine. Also, if you switch to using a different engine, you will probably need to rewrite your SQL query. And if you switch to using a different storage system, the engine might or might not support it. Uh, so there's a, there's a better way. Here's a new way of connecting three, the three layers of the data analytics stack. And this demonstrates our vision for applying Arrow and Substrate. So it begins the same way. On the client side, you write a SQL query. This could be, though, in any dialect of SQL that you choose. Uh, and a tool running on the client converts this SQL string into a substrate plan, and it sends this substrate plan to the engine. The engine receives it and then splits it into two substrate plans, a pushdown plan and a remainder plan. The pushdown plan consists of the operations in the query that the storage system is capable of executing. Uh, for example, this is, might be row filtering and column projection operations. The remainder plan consists of the rest of the operations 
which should be executed in the query engine, for example, aggregation uh, and sorting. Uh, the engine then sends the pushdown plan to the storage system. The storage system reads in the files into an arrow tabular data structure and then executes the pushdown plan on that data, returning an intermediate result. It sends this intermediate result in arrow format uh, back to the engine. The engine then executes the remainder plan on this intermediate result data to generate the final result data, again in arrow format, and it sends this final result data back to the client. This is a more efficient way to do it. There is no unnecessary serialization and deserialization happening, and we're sending a smaller amount of data over the network. Uh, but even better, you can swap out the query engine for any other arrow and substrate compatible query engine, and you can swap out the storage system for any other arrow and substrate compatible storage system, and everything will still work. Also, uh, if you're using Python and you prefer to write your query using IBIS, you can do that. And the IBIS code will compile to a substrate plan and all the other steps remain the same. Or if you're an R user and you prefer to write your query using dplyr, you can do that. The dplyr code will compile to a substrate plan and all the other steps remain the same. So you have uh, true modularity of the language or DSL layer of this stack also. I'll talk briefly now about some of the work that's happening to make this vision a reality. So Arrow is a standard and Substrate is a standard. Uh, Arrow has been around for six years. It's mature and it's become widely adopted and well understood by a lot of people in the data analytics ecosystem. Substrate though has been around for less than a year and there's more work to be done to make it a mature, stable standard. Some of the details about Substrate are already well established. For example, the Substrate format serializes to protocol buffers or protobuf, which is a popular open source cross-platform data format used to serialize data structures. The details of how Substrate plan is represented in protocol buffers is well established. Uh, by the way, Substrate can also be represented as JSON. Um, the major operators or relations in Substrate are also well established. These are the high level steps of a query, read, filter, project, aggregate, sort, and so on. Um, but there's a lot of work remaining to be done to define functions in the Substrate specification, uh, the kind of functions that you use in an expression in SQL or Python or R, uh, like arithmetic functions, string manipulation functions, aggregates, conditionals, and so on. Without a set of official substrate function names and expected type behaviors, substrate plans uh, will be fragment, fragmented into, into incompatible dialects. So this is a major area of work for the next few months. There's a project underway to create a substrate compiler for IBIS to allow Python users to write code in this convenient analytics DSL and have it execute on substrate compatible engines. And likewise, there's a project underway to create a substrate compiler for dplyr to allow R users to write dplyr code and have it execute on substrate compatible engines. There's also work ongoing to develop a Java based tool called Ithsmiths, which converts a SQL query into a substrate plan. Uh, this uses Calcite, um, which is a widely used Java-based SQL query parser and optimizer. We also hope to see some more work to convert SQL query strings into substrate plans, including implementations in non-JVM languages. Uh, so there's work underway to give several Arrow native query engines the ability to seek, speak substrate, to receive substrate plans and execute them and return Arrow formatted results. Um, the query execution engine in the Arrow C++ library, the, this is an engine we're now calling Acero, is one of these. Uh, DuckDB is another engine like this. And there are plans to build substrate into the Data Fusion engine and the Ballista distributed schedule, scheduler, both of which are parts of the Arrow project implemented in the Rust language. Uh, as for adding Substrate and Arrow support to storage systems, there is work ha happening there, but it's in early stages. So over the next year or so, I expect that we'll see a few storage systems implement built-in support for receiving pushdown plans uh, in Substrate format and then emitting Arrow data. So stay tuned for more on that. Um, there's also a variety of other Substrate tooling in the works, including a Substrate validator, tools for representing Substrate plans in a more easily human-readable format, 
and more. So um, I'm also excited by work happening in the Arrow community to define an Arrow database connectivity standard. Uh, we're calling it ADBC. This is a, a database access API based on Arrow with built-in support for Substrate. If you're interested in getting involved in any of this work, uh, check out the community pages of the Arrow and Substrate project websites. Both of these projects have mailing lists, bi-weekly meetings that you're welcome to attend, Twitter accounts, places to file issues, open source repositories where you can contribute, and lots of information about how to contribute. And we'd love to see, uh, see you following along and getting involved through these different channels. I also recommend following along with the Voltron Data blog and our Twitter and LinkedIn accounts. We plan to share lots of news about Arrow and Substrate in the coming months. Thank you.